Uh, thanks everyone for watching our video here at TESS. Uh, it's called Starting Conversations Early, a pre-arrival e-orientation program to support international TAs. My name is Yasin Ali. I go by he, him pronouns, and I'm a learning strategist at Academic Success at the University of Toronto. I'll also let my co-facilitators um, introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Tanya Ivanov, and I spent two wonderful years working on this project, and I'm happy to share a bit about it today. I currently work as an online learning consultant at the University of Waterloo. Hi everyone, my name is Lirone Efrat. I am also working on this project with Sania and Yassine for the past two years. Um, I recently graduated uh, from the University of Toronto with my PhD and I'm excited to be here with you. Great. And you'll also see the names of our two other collaborators, Christina and Mike, who work at the Teaching Assistance Training Program. They will be at the office hour, so you can uh, connect with them there as well. But I will move on to telling you a little bit about this program and the highly collaborative nature of it. So um, at the University of Toronto, we saw an opportunity to really meet the needs of international graduate students, particularly during the summer, because we found that a lot of students really wanted to learn about the institution, but they weren't able to arrive because of uh, immigration procedures. So often they arrive in September, there's a lot going on, but we saw a chance to really start the, those conversations as early as possible. And we found that this audience was really unique because they're not only students who are starting academic activities, but they're also planning to be teachers in the capacities of being teaching assistants or being mentors or working in labs, etc. So we thought this program could really straddle those two needs in terms of transition in, getting acquainted with not only the university, but the city of Toronto, but also having that unique focus on teaching. So um, that was a really uh, a great chance for the teaching assistance training program and the department uh, or the division of student life, I should say, to enhance that partnership and, th and talk about intercultural competencies in teaching, particularly because we wanted students to be uh, familiar with the multicultural nature of classrooms that would be multilingual students coming from different um, contexts around the world in terms of their educational um, experiences. So we applied for a three-year grant called the International Student Experience Fund, short, short form ISAF, and we were able to hire these amazing uh, TAs that I'm working with today. And we started off by doing focus groups with international teaching assistants across the university to talk about some of the challenges they face, what are the opportunities, what are the, the pending questions they have to share that with their future peers who are incoming, and really pr promote that peer-based model of mentoring. So not only just telling them these are the expectations of teaching at the university, but where are those opportunities opportunities to talk about some of the more ambiguous nature of teaching and what do I do in X situation, particularly when pivoting uh, to teaching and learning online, and that's where the pandemic comes in. So we'll talk about how that impacted the program. Sonia, I believe you'll start us off here. Yeah, the pandemic um, has impacted this program as it has, I'm sure, impacted many, many other programs across Canada and the world. But in our case, there were some positive impacts on our program. Students were, for example, becoming even more open to online learning and to navigating independently the resources that we have created for them on our Quirkus, a University of Toronto learning management system. Students were also familiar with the university learning management systems even, even before the pandemic, and they were eager to learn more about the technologies that we were using. And in the same line, I think we wanted to build something that would be asynchronous and, and folks could retrieve whenever it was convenient for them. But we also were realizing that students needed a just-in-time support. So that's why uh, we'll show you a little bit later, we had drop-in teaching circles. We wanted um, the TAs to be available at different times for students across the world. So offering those times at 9 a.m. Eastern time really made an impact for students who are in future time zones, just be able to get that, that support um, in that fleet way. We also find that st students were really interested in teaching strategies around inclusivity and anticipating um, students who were multilingual and speak English as an additional language. So that's where also those teaching circles came in. And as I said before, this was a great opportunity for graduate students who had those kind of legal um, restrictions to still participate and feel connected to the university and get prepared for what would be a very unique year at the university in terms of distance learning and remote teaching. So later on, we'll tell you a little bit about the snapshot of our program over the last two years. So basically, the mission statement of the e-orientation program um, is to support the transition of incoming first-year graduate students who would like to teach at the University of Toronto. 
Um, overall, we have three main program goals. One, to address some of the knowledge gaps that is specific to international students and that is not addressed by other orientation programs on campus. Two, um, we wanted to discuss the importance of intercultural perspectives with incoming TAs, domestic and internationals, and introduce this perspective as an additional and very useful teaching and learning skill. And three, we also wanted to discuss topics that may be specifically relevant to international students in higher education environments, such as accents, diverse communication styles, and so on, in order to also reduce some of the anxiety around uh, their arrival to campus. Um, in our year one deliverable, in our year one, sorry, our deliverables included four weekly webinars, four resource, um, a resource hub, a glossary document, and drop-in hours. And we adjusted those in year two to become a series of short videos with Q&A sessions that Yassine mentioned before and office hours as well, and community discussions supplemented by live working documents. In both years, we maintained um, the emphasis on intercultural perspectives and following the change in technology and format, we also saw a tremendous growth in enrollment from 80 students in year one, we grew to 485 students in year two. And just to give you some context on who was represented in the program, who participated in the program, many international students were already residing in Canada at the time of registration. That is, more than 50% of our participants were already in Canada. The other most represented countries, apart from Canada, were China, United States, India, Iran, and Colombia. And when we say international students, we also mean students with other types of legal status, such as permanent residents who consider themselves international because they might have begun their studies as international students or for a variety of other reasons identify as international students. You uh, can see on the slides the top countries that were uh, represented in 2000 and uh, one, uh, 2021 are very similar to the top countries that are represented um, in 2020. Um, they were people from Nigeria, Singapore, and Iran, Colombia, United States, China, India, and Canada in both cases. So um, with this slide, we can really see that across all of our program offerings, we attempted to address new students' main concerns about teaching in higher education context in Canada. We anticipated and crowdsourced um, these concerns by a focus groups um, we conducted early on, so before the first year of the program. Uh, we also conducted enrollment surveys and also tried to capture and record students' questions in our live sessions. Um, we reviewed these concerns and turned them into resource pages, tackling common questions. We then reviewed those questions and resources and grouped them um, to create several topics to establish our program modules. As per these uh, topics, alongside the concern around how to acquire teaching position and skills, we also identified and tried to address um, topics related to COVID-19 procedures and teaching in virtual environments. We had envisioned our Quercus Shell as a living resource hub which provides a glossary of terms and acronyms commonly thrown around the University of Toronto, as well as information about the ways in which our TAs can engage synchronously and asynchronously. For example, in the first year, we had paired resources with synchronous structured webinars. And in the second year, we replaced those webinars with short videos to be watched at students' own time and paired them with QA sessions to allow for more interactions with us. The key goals of this shell and the program more broadly was to create an ongoing and curated reference tool for ITAs who could go back throughout their programs and reference some of the materials that we have posted for them. We also aim to foster an asynchronous community of practice and to familiarize new international teaching assistants with the University of Toronto's learning management system, which is Quercus, similar to Canvas. 
So here is a quick snapshot of the e-orientation landing page and what students actually encountered when they registered. Um, we tried to make the home page into an easy landing page for navigation and the shell also included an instructional video to assist with way findings for new students. Um, we also thought it is important to introduce ourselves as the facilitators, Sonia and myself, um, and as instructional designers, um, so that students could put face to the name. And for this reason, we also included in that landing page what we hope is a friendly Meet the Facilitators page. We utilize the opportunities that the learning management system offers and chunked the content into separate modules and then into videos and written resources. Our learning management system consisted, uh, our page of the learning management system consisted of four modules with the goal to ease navigation and emphasize specific topics, perspectives, and resources. The one that is currently showing on the screen focused on the ins and outs of working as a TA at the University of Toronto and as such focused on the funding packages and their relationship with TA ships, um, the ways in which TA ships positions are offered, as well as offered resources on various services within the university. Accessibility and accommodation, for example, Center for International Experience, School of Graduate Studies, and the library system, among others. One of the things that Sonia mentioned earlier was an asynchronous community of practice, but what we also found was there was really opportunities to provide workshops throughout the academic year. So uh, one thing that we did was um, extend that notion of intercultural teaching and learning to thinking about how do you create that environment and atmosphere online? How do you assess student work thinking about that in mind? Um, and also how this really benefits all TAs. So although the focus in the e-orientation is to support the challenges and the questions of international teaching assistance, we also wanted to bring that message forward that intercultural uh, teaching and learning, competence, whatever you call it, is not just for international students. It actually benefits everyone in the classroom. So these workshops were open to all TAs, whether they're domestic or international, and they, they were able to use these workshops as part of their certificate programming and within the equity and access component. Another uh, thing that happened very organically in the year two was we, we tried to create a community of practice that was very drop-in, that met the needs of TAs who were very busy, so it wasn't a program that was cohort-based, although we tried to, to de develop that sense of community over time. But this was a space to just talk about intercultural teaching. What are the challenges that are coming up? Let's troubleshoot things together. And let's come at it from this notion of responsibility and humility and moving away from this notion that this is a competence that can be taught and you know you can check it off your list, maybe about how we're kind of entering spaces of discomfort and learning uh, uh, alongside our students and modeling that behavior. And one of the things that was really great about this space is that we created a, a working document to crowdsource those strategies so they're archived on the Kirkus shell so students could always go back and learn from their peers even if they weren't able to attend those sessions live. Yeah, so basically our design principles for the program can be divided into three main fields. So in the field of educational technologies, we employed institutionally approved tools like Mentimeter to facilitate real-time interactions with participants and to collect and organize the information. Um, we also used Canvas, the university's um, uh, learning management system, as we mentioned before, as well as diverse video tools to produce accessible asynchronous content. Um, to accommodate students in multiple time zones, as Yasin mentioned before, we hosted live one-on-one -on -one drop-in sessions, in addition to the four weekly synchronous sessions the webinars. Um, every week during the program we offered both a 9 a.m. office hour session and a noon session for Q&A and collective engagement. Lastly, we also adhere to UDL principles when designing our modules. Our videos are short and include easily digestible small chunks of information and so we hope at least, um, and the program also offers written and interactive resources such as discussion boards and reflection activities. To support accessibility, we also included instructional videos um, on how to navigate the shell and how to access all the resources. In utilizing EdTech to the best of our abilities, 
we were allowed for a variety of interactions. So we offered them to other TAs, such as offering them the opportunity to ask questions on and off video. The off video part was not very well received because we uh, can, so we cannot deem the discussion boards that we had in our learning management system as success, but we can certainly say that the TAs use the opportunities for synchronous and asynchronous interactions eagerly. And all of the above demonstrated in one way or another our strengths-based approach to international students, which was further strengthened by the decisions of the two partners to promote peer-based mentoring. Me and Liron as international TAs shared our experiences as international students and international TAs to other international TAs to support their transition to the University of Toronto, to clarify their expectations and the expectations that their students will have from them and to support them in building a community. In so doing, we aim to set up international teaching assistance for success. Our goal was to begin a culture change that perceives intercultural competency as an invaluable transferable skill, one that is ultimately, we hope, supporting all teaching assistants and their students. That's all from us. Uh, we look forward to connecting with you at TESS during the office hour, and thank you for listening.